Aho has played, Aho has played games one, last two, he's, a little, he's a little bit four, older. Five, six, seven. He's played eight. How many of you think he's he's at thirty goals? Six. Probably six. Six. And the one year he had twenty nine, and the other two he had twenty four. So suck on them apples. <laughs> okay, that's that's good. <laughs> All right, what is up, everybody? Welcome back here to Four Fly Guys, episode 20. We got a lot of Phantoms talk, a lot of playoff talk. Uh, it's May 2nd, and we're getting into it. Uh, this is going to be coming out May 3rd. Uh, as you hear it here, uh, Four Fly Guys, episode 20. Uh, yeah, boys, I mean, it's been uh, a lot of crazy games, uh, a lot of gentlemen sweeps in the NHL playoffs, Phantoms, uh, with some really good moments uh, over the past couple of days. And uh, they're moving into round two as well. We'll talk about that. Uh, Danny Briere is in another country. We'll uh, you know, talk about that. There's also an update on uh, everyone's uh, highly touted and, and favorite, I think, Flyers prospect, Matthew Mitchkov. Uh, Igor Zavrigan gets traded. Uh, we'll talk about the summer ahead. And I uh, got some questions here at the end. So, yeah, boys, lots to talk about. Uh, Paul, start with you. What's up, brother? Yeah, yeah, it's eventful. Even with the Flyers not playing, there's still uh, a lot going on. Phantoms, obviously, giving you know Philly something to, to cheer about. So good to see them making a run, and uh, yeah, we'll get get a little bit more into them in uh, in a second. But uh, you know, producer Owen, what's up, man? How's it going? Uh, you know, not much. Um, I say not much. I mean a lot. Uh, I've been working hard on trying to fix last week's episode. Sorry about the you oh, know yeah. mix up there, everybody. But, yeah. um, you know, it, it's all up. You can check out our tier list rankings. You can see we uh, posted our full tier list for um, what we what we graded uh, Flyers players this year on our Twitter account. So you can check those out. We've been getting a lot of really uh, – I don't think people oh, are too so, happy with our ratings. No, yeah, yeah I was going to say a lot of really kind <laughs> comments from people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. about it's how cool great to see of some of the engagement did. on that. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, it, but it's been fun, you know, all in good fun um cool. what about you will what's up um not a ton going on with me recently to be honest um been watching some playoff hockey um shame to see that maybe paul might have been slightly right about the panthers yeah, over the, the lightning um listen yeah guys when paul is right it's the worst it's thing the worst feeling in the world <laughs> it is like getting squashed with a 400 pound boulder on the back it yeah, feels no. even worse that it's horrible I think he's Man. number two in our uh, mm-hmm. in the mayor media bracket challenge. Oh, don't worry, well. I'll be number one soon. Don't Listen, worry. when the Leafs turn this around, I'm going to be number one. So no, you're not. You I'm picked Winnipeg. <laughs> yeah, that's the only one I got wrong. Okay, right. If we're I being mean, honest, like, guys, the rounds that really matter are the later rounds. I believe I, yeah, it's the yes, first round. If each series is worth 25 points, and it might be 50, then 100. Like it's something ridiculous yeah. like that. And so the first like, round's a lot more predictable too. Yeah, like to to have a chance in the in the bracket. Like, I feel like the later rounds are more predictable. No, honestly, just because like they're, like there could be injury and well, you things. might not even know. You might not even get the teams in the later. That makes round. it more unpredictable. The fact that there could be injury later on in the playoffs. Yeah, I guess. I think and I'm like, thinking more on like a betting standpoint. Like if you're like live betting kind of thing. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. But like making the bracket. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, right now Paul is second in the challenge. Um, it's terrible. So yeah, <laughs> make sure we But I mean, who knows? Maybe hopefully it won't last. Um, oh man, I'm close behind. I, I haven't got anything wrong yet. Yep, and then I'm, I'm third, and Chris would be fourth among among dude, us four. I so badly uh, wish you so badly wish that you had my picks, dude. You so badly me? wish. Come no, I now. don't. Both of you. No. Both of you. You got one thing right, right and you're in the trenches right you're now. Such, you're such high shit. Absolutely you got in the trenches right wrong? now because you guys couldn't recognize oh. it. And it's and it's so funny because I think you're you're you, you still make it like not like all of us said that Tampa would win. Like we all said Florida was gonna win. Yeah, but you didn't oh. accept that they were cooked. Because I don't think anyone I don't did. think they're cooked. No, they are. We'll we'll, we'll get into yeah, this I more in the yeah. playoff conversation. Yeah. But, yeah. Sorry, right, Will, right. what was that? What were you trying to say? <laughs> uh, have you had a round predicted wrong yet so far? No, if if but neither uh, I. if yeah, I have, if I have, one, one. If I have one. If Toronto pulls off the the complete comeback and they win Game Seven, then that'll be the only one I got wrong. But other than that, so far, and and unless Dallas chokes too, 
and yeah. Vancouver and Nashville. I think they're if Vancouver holds on to that, I'll be good. But mm. in my defense, can I please just say that I didn't think that Winnipeg was going to be that bad? Because I didn't think it would be that bad either. I they, thought like, that was the a best, kind of best goalies in the, in the probably the best goalie in the NHL. One of the best defenses in the NHL, one of the best offenses in the NHL, and they all look like shit, all three of them at one time. Is Hellebuck the best goalie in the NHL, though? I mean, he's one of the top two, top he's three, he's maybe. Up there. He's, up yeah. there. he's up there, yeah. yeah. He's I mean, best American he goalie, has, sure. though. Like, I yeah, think you guys know, but like, yeah. I just looked at like game one, and I'm like, they're scoring all these goals, and like, Winnipeg is buzzing, and I'm like, I don't know, I thought I was on to something, and then they lose four straight, and I was like, eesh. Yeah, I don't know. That's sometimes I think it's. I mean, look. I mean, I think everyone had. I think I think really the only other ones that were like hard to predict were, um, Colorado, Winnipeg, and uh, Dallas, and uh, and Vegas. I think that one kind of went either way too. Um, and Dallas is one through straight there. But uh, before we get into the actual NHL playoffs, we'll talk about the Phantoms here. So, uh, a lot of stuff with the Phantoms. We've been doing a lot of coverage. Uh, make sure you keep following that up. Um, whether it's on. Uh, our main account, Mayor Media, that's across everything, all of our socials, obviously the website as well, uh, or PHI Pipeline, which is our whole prospect brand. Um, we do a lot of fandoms coverage there. We're going to also be having some more, you know, kind of day to day coverage uh, for next season, too. So kind of stay tuned for that. We'll have some updates for that over the summer. Um, but yeah, as for now, we're kind of getting in the, in, into the taste of some playoff hockey. This is really our first like playoff coverage that we've really ever done as a company. So it's been fun. Uh, Paul and my, and, and myself, we were able to uh, cover game two against Wilkes-Barre uh, in the press box, which honestly might have been the worst game to cover in the press box because you couldn't celebrate after how fucking sick that game was. Um, yeah, just I in mean, terms of, like, of a hockey standpoint, like that's one yeah. of the most fun games I've ever seen in my life. Um, yeah. Just like electrifying moments, like shift after shift. Uh, Paul, yeah, I don't so, know if you want to add anything else to that. but so Yeah, so for anybody who doesn't really know, the – the whole concept behind the press box, right? I mean, you're there to cover a game. You have a job to do. You're not necessarily in the building as a fan. I think, you know, we've preached it a lot within the company that, like, you know, nothing's wrong with being a fan and having your roots as, like, a diehard fan of the team. I think in order to be a good journalist, media member, whatever you want to consider yourself, I think you have to have roots within the sport and you have to love the game. And, uh, you know, I don't think any of us here really have, you know, any issue in taking pride in that, but you do still have to keep it professional and, uh, in the press box, you know, there's, there's not really a lot of celebrating that goes on, but that game made it really difficult. <laughs> I mean, they came back, uh, not once, but twice. Tanner, Tanner Lazinski was unreal. He had, uh, he had the, the tying goal. I believe it was on the power play, weird bounce, took a deflection, and then he tied it up again late when it looked like they were just, you know, they were done. And dude, just picked the corner. I think it was top left, like just absolutely sniped them. Clean shot. It was unreal game. Um, Phantom swept them. I mean, you know, I, I think I've kind of said everything I can. But Chris, what do you uh, what do you think about that? Because I know yeah. we're sitting right next to each other, but maybe you saw it a little bit differently. Yeah. No. I mean, for I, I'm look. Look. I mean, it, it took the Phantoms. I thought in game one. I mean, I, I obviously have been doing streams for them, and me and Paul will be doing stream for game two against Hershey, and then some other ones kind of later on in the series if it, if it happens. Um. So I mean, look. Like I, I thought game one. I thought they did a really good job of just like creating offense, like right outside of of the Penguins zone, and just keeping pucks in, and and just like look, their forecheck was really good, and. I thought early in the in game two, like it really struggled and they, they just couldn't get anything going. And I was like, oh, this is going to be a long night. Like if they keep playing this way, this isn't going to be good. And then like second period, they got a couple power plays. They had some five on threes later in the game as well, which they ended up scoring on. Um, Phantom's power play actually it looks pretty decent. I mean, for, you know, the the guys that they have down there, they don't really have like, a, it's kind of similar to the Flyers. Like they don't have like a, a real threat on it, but they have a lot of good players. Um, and it, it's been working. I mean, they had the five on three goal from Andre. Uh, then they get the other one right after from Brink, who I, I mean, look, I think the biggest thing with the Phantoms right now is that the guys that you you're wanting to step up are the guys that are playing well. Like Brink is, you know, he's not, not, not a ton of points, but he's had some some good moments, has some score, but he has a lot of assists Had a primary in the, the last game, game one against Hershey. Um, Tanner Legzinski has three goals, like Paul mentioned, he had the two goal game and then scored the other goal the other night. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, as of right now, you know, they lose 2 1 in game one. If any other goalie that isn't named uh, Hunter Shepard in game one for Hershey is in the net, the Phantoms probably win. Uh, they had multiple chances to score. They hit, I think Owe Lixel hit the post once or twice. Um, they played good. They just couldn't score, unfortunately. If they play like that over these next, you know, two, three, four games, however many are in this series out of the best of five, they should be okay. Um, and then it, it's like the AHL playoffs is a little different. It's not like your normal, like, one, two, three cup final. It's like one, two, three, four, five, then the final. So it's a, you kind of play like five rounds, but they're smaller series. So it's less games. Um, cause there's so many teams and all that too, but it's, uh, it's been exciting. I think just to see like some of the guys down there, um, who again, like I said, like you're, you're kind of hoping to play well and you're hoping to have some, some big minutes. Cause you can kind of look at it as like a, for those guys on that roster, it's kind of like an early chance to kind of make the Flyers out of camp a little bit, or at least kind of help your chances if you have a good playoff run and give yourself some confidence going into training camp, stuff like that, because training camp is going to be huge for the Flyers next year. Um, I've been kind of reiterating that multiple times. So, like, you know, I, I think it's good, especially for, again, like I said, guys like Brink. Um, I would like to see Kolosov, but unfortunately, like, when you get to the playoffs, you want to win, and, you know, Peterson's been, been playing well and um, hasn't really, I mean, like, I don't really think Peterson's given up like a bad goal yet. I thought the second one he definitely could have had. Um, but it, it was it was one of those ones where it was like, you know, bad play in front. No one really picked up a stick kind of thing. So it was it was multiple dudes or, you know, multiple things that kind of led to uh, the goal in front. But outside of that, man, I mean, I, I think they've they've had some good moments. I, th- I think they'll be all right. It should be a good series to kind of now that Hershey. So we'll see. Yeah. Um, hoping to get out to a game. Um, I think a lot of us are going to Wednesday's game in Lehigh. Um, yep. Hopefully that's a, at the very least a fun one. Um, yeah, Phantoms, I mean, it's nice to have hockey to watch even after the Flyers are out of things. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, you know, it's an, it's an interesting thing. Here's a question. If Peterson backstops the Phantoms to a Calder Cup, which not saying they're likely to get there by any means, but if he does and he does it well, is he worth the contract to a rebuilding Flyers team? I would say, yeah. Great question. Yeah, probably. I mean, he wins him a championship. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, I think at that point he'd probably, you know, I'd hope he'd have all the confidence in the world going in the camp then. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'll say this. You know what? Crazy thing. If Peterson backstops the Phantoms to a Calder Cup uh, championship win, I will buy a Peterson Phantoms jersey. Nice. Yeah. Okay. It, I good. think it's a fair. You know fair what? I think I'm going to join. Yeah, I mean, I was going to say that's wild, but that is kind of fair. Yeah. Like I said, we all do it then. Yeah. All four of us. All four I'll, of get us. A Br- I'll get a Brink Phantoms jersey. Of course. <laughs> that's, fair. That's, good. <laughs> that's fair. That's good. Best bumper yeah. in the AHL right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, best player on the right flank. Let's go. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> That'd be quite the bag because Phantom Phantoms jerseys are hard enough to to get as they are. Yeah. But the, the their white jerseys are so clean. Like I just don't the the thing that bothers me with them is like they have that like orange like right on like on front of the neck and like the back part. And I'm just like like why is that there? Like if they just remove that, it looks so much cleaner because you have the ad the Flyers logo, their 10 year anniversary patch. Like there's, and then if someone has an A or a C, like it's all over the place. So that's the one thing is like the AHL jerseys, they have like, they have like obviously the ads and there's more patches and all too, but they're, yeah. the, the fan of jerseys are so clean. I, I really don't mind like the ads and the patches on the jerseys though. I know a lot of people find them distracting and then I don't, I really don't care. Yeah. I, for me, I don't mind them. I just, I hate it when there's like, like I said, like when there's multiple things you have to put on. Like oh, the yeah. specialty yeah, logo, and like the Flyers, like, it just moves yeah. around. Because they had two shoulder patches on their aways, and I'm like, what? Like, what are we doing here? I, mean, let's I, think, I still think that they have the. I think the Phantoms have the best logo and the best jerseys in minor league hockey. I was saying that to Paul earlier. Yeah. I think they, I think the Phantoms yeah. are one of the best jerseys in professional sports. I or agree. Logos, I, I, think, I should say. Logos. I agree. I think it's it's logo, really clean. Yeah. I think the only thing that they should probably do is let's be honest here, bring back the purple. Dude, I mean. You see it's, it right behind you. Yeah. Come I don't on. like the striping on the old purple ones, but if they like kind of no, combine the new style with the old style. Or I'm with not like even saying color. as a 
I'm not even saying as a primary color, but even if they just brought it back as like just having like a purple streak within the logo or some sort of small purple component on the jersey, I just think it would look that much cleaner. You know, they're all yeah, white jersey right. with the orange piping. Yeah. Imagine that, but instead of orange, it's just purple. Oh, you guys putting that Phantom jersey on mid pod. Uh oh. Gotta oh, cover yeah. up the wife beater. Oh, here we go. <laughs> He's ditching the wife beater for the Phantom jersey, please. <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> I forgot about that shoulder logo with the. Yeah, let's go. With flex. That's sick. Yeah. That's sick. I fucking love this jersey. I found That's this. Nice jersey. I found this somewhere, like when I was a kid, and um, I don't know how what I ended up doing with it. I think I literally just took it and left. Like it, it was like a gem to find. It's like they got the stitch and all. Like it's sick. And now I'm really hot, but I'm gonna keep it on anyway. Um. You uh, yeah. where, 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 you, when you say you found this jersey, where'd you find it? Goodwill? No, <laughs> no, not Goodwill. Me and Paul have a very funny story about Goodwill. Oh man. Uh, the the other the other night, I won't go into too deep, too much detail and go off topic. But the other night, we uh, it was probably like six o'clock, kind of just messing around. We just got down to the hockey rink, driving on uh, I think it was seventy three in Jersey, and. Uh, we're driving up and bagging it off the exit. And I, I looked and I see that there's a, a Goodwill store sign. I looked at him. I said, you think of what I'm thinking? And then you go Goodwill. He's like, yeah, why not? You know, we had nothing to do and just kind of waiting around. And uh, we go in, walking around, trying to find whatever we can. The only thing we could find was a youth, uh, large, extra large Nico Heischer uh, jersey, devil's home jersey. That was all we could find hockey-wise. It was dirt um, cheap too. Yeah, it was like five bucks. Anyway, so I go into I go into the, the corner of uh, I go into the corner of the store and there's a bunch of golf clubs and there's some hockey sticks over there, and one of the workers is standing behind me with a fucking golf club, like in the air, like he's about to bash it over my head, and I don't remember what he screamed. I think Paul Paul might know, but I don't remember right now. But this guy, like, and it, it was just like the most like like awkward thing like that could have could that could have he happened goes, he, he swings the club towards his head like you know and jokingly or whatever but it was just weird he goes goodbye mr christian because he was wearing he was using a christian stick we're like dude what <laughs> it's I just was the like, most random thing i i was like what the fuck just happened like yeah, i turned no to christian him mayor. And he's, he's yeah no. and he's crying laughing in the middle of the goodwill and I'm like, dude, I'm like, we have to leave. I like that. There is no staying in this store after that. Like, we have to just go. <laughs> I wouldn't, I would never go back to that store. I, I will never set foot back in that good ball. Yeah, I good. never, I can't do it. It, it was oh, hard. Man. I was like, like, what are we doing? Like, it's insane. It, wow, it's man. unreal. You know, right now I feel, I feel like the hockey guy kind of wearing this jersey just with like no shirt yeah. on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's good. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Shannon. Speaking of um, hockey guy, Paul, how's that jersey collection coming along? Oh, it's gone. It's gone. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we don't have that. I mean, we don't have to talk about it, but, uh, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I'm putting you on the drops, spot here. Dude drops more than $100 on a fucking mystery hockey jersey. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I might have dropped a little bit of a bag. Hey, just, just take it as, take it as a, uh, a current future investment for, the studio of of the pod that's that's what it's going to be it, it's that's it's a good. current investment now for the future that's the way i see it, it. Come yet? No. no no clue he doesn't even know be. if he's getting it with with my luck it'll probably be a a, a blank, blank bruins jersey blank or something yeah a yeah, blank we'll jersey or something yeah We'll see. Yeah, that'll be great for our podcast about the Flyers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in, our entire, in our entire media company about the Philadelphia Flyers. Yeah, that's fucking good. Boston Bruins jersey that you spent a hundred and whatever the fuck on. Yeah, thank God. It would be funnier if you got like an identical Flyers jersey that you already have. I mean, the odds <laughs> are. A complete, you imagine you got a Cam Atkinson signed Canon yeah. jersey from Adidas. That would be very funny. Yeah. Already have that. Yeah. Yeah, eBay yeah, does wonders, man. I'm telling how you. How much was that? I was, it was, I mean, you know, no offense to the guy, but I mean, <laughs> the stock has dropped, so <laughs> it was cheaper. Um, yeah, it was, it was under a hundred dollars. So eBay does wonders. Yeah. There you go. 
Nope. All right. Uh, Stanley Cup playoffs. Uh, our brackets are, I think, doing okay. Um, I know mine is. Yeah, I'm. I'm doing. Yeah, we fun. know, Paul. You let us know. Yeah, yeah. no, you've said it six times. Thanks, Paul. Uh, yeah, thanks, Paul. Uh, our. Uh, I mean, mine's mine's doing all right. I had. Uh, hold on, I, I got a picture of it on my phone. I have. Uh, I had Florida winning, right? And I had them in six, and I got that right because, well, I got the that not six, but I got you know, Panthers right. Uh, I had Toronto in seven, so I'm getting good with that. Rangers I had in five, and uh, Carolina I had in six. Um, I was a game off there, so I had the Rangers. The Rangers won, uh, and the Hurricanes right. I have Florida and Toronto in the second round. That still could happen. Uh, in the West, I had Edmonton. In seven, I have Vancouver in six. If they win that tomorrow night as we're recording this, that would be tonight if you're listening. Uh, that would be game six if Vancouver wins. That's right. I had the Jets in seven. Fuck me. And I had uh, Dallas in six. So uh, that that could be working. I think I'm, I think I'm doing all right. Uh, what place are you in the bracket challenge, Chris? Fuck you, Will. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I, we'll see how it goes. Chris is currently near the bottom, but you know I don't understand. I think I don't. Why am I? Why am I near the bottom? Is because of the games? Because you because the of the only Jets. series that have ended so far are the ones that like everyone knew who was going to win. So like, except for apparently Chris. Why was everyone sleeping yeah. in Winnipeg? I guess I should have known, but yeah, because okay, yeah, I, I think Winnipeg was the result. West, but they're playing the Avs. Yeah, I, I thought well, Winnipeg had a good shot still, of winning. Like, I don't know. I mean, I don't really I mean, watch clearly. the so Maybe that's why. I, my thing is that Nathan McKinnon was like a few points away from winning the scoring title this year. So I wasn't going to choose not Nathan. I mean, that being said, I did choose Florida over Tampa. So I guess that logic doesn't really hold up. But, but like yeah. Tampa has I don't know. Kucherov. Like it held up pretty well. And, and, as Will, and as Will said, it, yeah, Kucherov's a power play merchant, right? Yeah. No. And again, I, like I, I said this before we I started. Think, like, I, I, I said thought Kucherov is the power player for that team. Okay, that's true. I but, also thought like Hellebuck and their D and and like their power play looked good and and their offense was you know one of the top in the league. I, I thought that would all play into effect, but it just didn't. Like they I, just I think Colorado's know. just too deep of a team for them. I just don't think they could keep up. Yeah, like yeah. Colorado could roll every line and and you know they had somebody on every line that could do something. I mean, Arturi Lekkinen's having a crazy playoff. Like kind of, I don't want to say out of nowhere he's a good player, but like, yeah, I mean, my cup pick is still good. strong. I'll say that. Your what? What's your cup pick? My cup pick is still is still strong. I have uh, Edmonton beating Carolina. I st- I still think that's wild. Uh, I don't. Yeah. Why do you think that's wild? I just don't think Edmonton's built to go far in the playoffs. Like I think they're built to, to like perpetually top out. In the I think round. they have a fucking open, oh, like an open lane to the conference final. They're struggling really? against the Kings. They beat them in five. How do you struggle in both? Yeah, five? I don't think they were struggling yeah, like, necessarily. But a lot of those games were close. Yeah, I mean, oh, so were the Islanders game game games. Well, okay, but it's also the Kings, and the Kings are like, I don't know. I would say the Kings are worse than the Islanders. No. No. They're definitely not worse than the Islanders. They're not worse than the Islanders. I don't know. I mean, they beat them in five. I don't think you can say you struggle if you beat a team in I mean, five. Okay. Though. But like, would do we would we say the Canes struggled against the Panthers last year? Uh, I'm not not that yeah, the game I mean, they couldn't close, score. But, oh, I mean, I, I just think I mean, the they got comes down to like if you can win, they like yeah, game by one goal. Yeah, but I feel like when the in the playoffs you have to win those games. Like one one goal games are the playoffs, kind of. I don't know. know. I just think I just think the Kings are not a great test so far. I would I, I would agree. say. That, well, yeah, the, but it's not like it took them seven fucking games. To be fair, I mean, the Kings five. the Kings traded away all their depth to get a guy who only put up 40 points. So, I mean, you know, it's not like the Kings are exactly a deep team anymore. Out, which is insane. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not surprised. I, 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 just, I just don't – I just think that the Oilers are really top-heavy, and I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that. Like, that, that's a recipe, good recipe for regular season success. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, it's kind of like the same thing we've been seeing with the Leafs, right? I mean – Obviously, the Oilers are a little bit different because they have arguably the two best players in the world on their team at the same time. But and, I mean, their, their power play is like 
I, I was watching Chicklets the other day, and I was watching one of the clips of uh, Ryan Whitney talking about like if your your power play and your penalty kill percentages, if they can both add up to like 105, 110 around there. Like so, basically, like what he was saying was if it can be around, you know, let's say like a 20 something percent power play and then like an 80 something percent penalty kill, right? And it just adds up. He said the Oilers, and that this was before they basically had three fucking power play goals in game five. Uh, they were at 153%. They were eight for 15 on the, like yeah. no one stopping that power play. Like you, you can't take a penalty against them. You can't. Yeah, but and power under- plays become much more scarce as you go further into the playoffs. Yeah. I power mean, play becomes much less not much yeah. I don't want to say much much less important but like it's it's a significant drop off in the amount of penalties that get called. Yeah. I mean I thought there were some very favorable calls in favor of the Oilers in that game. Um and I think it's kind of I think it's been weird with the playoffs. Do you guys think the officiating has been good so far or in the middle bad? It's it's I don't know. I think it's I haven't noticed anything like egregiously bad. Yeah, off the top of my head, like last night there was a holding call on um, Pierre Luc Dubois that I was like, "There's no way they just called that." Um, yeah, but you're gonna get that every once in a while. Just, it, I mean, right. it's just like it's hockey. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, like I, I, another... I remember, I just remember last year's playoffs. There was like some, like cra- I, I spent like last year's playoffs. I remember being pretty bad with the officiating. I can't think of like I, like I said, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I remember like the Leafs kind of getting screwed over a couple of times. Yeah. Um, cause I mean, cause the Panthers were just like animals and they were just yeah. murdering people on the ice and not getting called for it. Yeah, yeah they were. But that, I mean, it, all the way through the playoffs. So, but like, I haven't noticed anything like that. Like these playoffs, like the refs have been pretty good about calling stuff and, and, you know, calls have been pretty fair. I just, yeah. yeah. But like I said, like that, that kind of goes away the further you get into the playoffs. So I think it might be just be recency bias where we're remembering the later rounds of last year and being like early rounds are a little bit different than, you know, Probably. the final. Yeah. Uh, updates for some schedules and stuff. The game one uh, between the Rangers and Hurricanes, it'll start on Sunday. They're, the times are to be announced. And then uh, the Florida, Boston, or Toronto uh, in round two, that's going to start on Monday in Florida. Um, so a little update on the scheduling and stuff like that. But as we kind of round out the rest. Um, but, yeah, so the Avs, they beat the Jets in five. Uh, Oilers beat the Kings in five. Panthers beat the Lightning in five. Hurricanes beat the Islanders in five. A lot of gentlemen sweeps. And then the one legit sweep was Rangers over the Caps in four. Um, Ovechkin held pointless. Uh, do we think the Flyers at least probably could have at least won a game or two against the Rangers? Easy. Maybe one. There's there's no chance. Yeah, they I think, got they, I think they could have got – I think they probably could have won one or two. I was going to say, I think it would have um, gone five or six at least. There's no I, way I they would have won. But they definitely could have pushed five or six. No, I'm kidding. I think they would have lost. Um but I do think it could have been at least probably six. Um, I thought they played the Rangers good in the regular season. Like there were some moments where it was like, "Holy shit, what are we doing?" But for the most part, I thought they were fine. I thought if they were healthy, um, it probably would have been better. But I don't know. That's a that's a a tough one. Uh, Panthers over the Lightning uh, in five. Uh, Steven Stamkos is kind of just watching towards the end of the game. Um, any thoughts on that? Anything on uh, we we had the meme tweet kind of go out the other day of the really big uh, Stamkos head on the Flyers body. Um, yeah. Stamkos to the Flyers is that something we think could happen or no? No. I mean, it would. It's a really fun. I, I, I tweeted this out. It's a really fun idea, but it's a really bad idea for I'm right now in the rebuild. What's that? I'm gonna dream. You're gonna. <laughs> could you imagine Stephen fucking Stamkos teaching Owen Tippett? And Tyson Forrester and all these other young guys on this team how to shoot a Bobby hockey puck. Yeah, Bobby Brink. Yes, Bobby Stamkos. More than Savior. Bobby, Bobby, yeah, Bobby Stammer. Stammer. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Hell yeah. It's Bobby time, not Stammer time. Right. Um, yeah. Five o'clock. Yeah. Five o'clock. Nice. Five o'clock. That's good. Hell yeah. It would be uh, funny because Stamkos would sure. go from playing with one of the like most like dynamic offensive Russians. To another one of the most dynamic offensive Russians, if Mitchkov did come over, um, that'd be the only funny part. Uh, but like outside that, 
I just I, I don't see it happening even a little bit. No, it, it's it's yeah. definitely not happening. There's there is no cap hit or I think money in the world you could throw at Steven Stamkos to come here. I don't think they have, they have, um, I don't think they have the money to throw at Steven Stamkos. No, they yeah. don't. And the only reason I'm saying it is just because it's just like fun. Um, yeah, it, it, it would be uh, super fun. Yeah, I will. Like it's yeah. fun to just think about that again. You know what I mean? Like to be like, oh, we could go out and get this guy. Would you rather have Stamkos like sign him for like you know three year deal or get Jeru back for one more year? Fuck Jeru, Stammer. I'm I I would rather take Jeru, but that's just because Stammer. I have his jersey hanging up behind me. Because Jeru, <laughs> so, we've already seen I don't it. No, we've already seen it. We saw we saw Jeru for fifteen yeah, years. Don't get me wrong. Giroux. Don't get me wrong. I'd love to see the guy back and like win a cup with him. But at the end of the day. You're only really going to get one shot to see Steven Stamkos in a Flyers jersey. I'd buy a Stamkos Flyers jersey. Oh, dude. Yeah, you'd have to. I, I mean, my answer is you too. It, it, it's got to be. How could your answer not be Jeru, Paul? Because we've seen it before. So? We see your ugly I, mug every episode. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Yeah, no, but like. Paul Jeru, though. Well, again, we saw it for 15 years. You're only going to get one chance to see Steven Stamkos in a Flyers jersey. And yeah, like, I don't care. I'd rather see Drew. Ultimately, right, but he's – okay, so he was a, a huge voice here for so many years. And don't get me wrong. Like I said, I would love to have that guy back. But at what point do you just need new voices? You know what I mean? Like that's the whole point of this rebuild is they're trying to get new voices. Bringing back a guy who was already here as the lead every voice. every person on Flyers Facebook. <laughs> that's good. Flyers Facebook. That's that's you know that's quite Not a, even true. A bum, we've, right? we've hit the other app. Uh the other <laughs> <laughs> the other app. Yeah, man. I don't know. It would take a lot of gymnastics to I will say if they could, if there could be anything in the world to get Jake Voracek to be healthy and play for the Philadelphia Flyers for one more season, I would do anything. Like literally anything. <laughs> How about just God. one more game. Oh god. A send off game against <sighs> Columbus. I'll be a sellout. I think I'd run around. around the, for that. I think I'd run around in the building naked. <laughs> or, uh, or, or maybe just have him go up against. Yeah, no, uh, not gonna do that, Chris. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, they just designed, They just heard this and they went. You know what? Nope. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's that idea. Jake also just maybe, blocked uh, on Twitter. <laughs> well, that's an honor, though. So that's just yeah, an honor well. at that point. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe they could have his uh, his one off game against Colorado, so that way he can play Stephen Samkos. But uh, so we we mentioned earlier we got the Leafs and the Bruins coming up. Um, as when this uh, podcast drops, it'll be tomorrow. Um, so two days for us, one day for the listeners. Who do you guys got in Game Seven? Leafs, Leafs, baby. Austin Matthews is going to get over whatever's happening right now. He's just scored nine goals. Well, they're, 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 they they got to activate them for Game Seven, right? Like they have to. It's Game Seven. It's winner go yeah. home. So I, I, I think it's going to be Leafs too. I think the Bruins choke it, and that's going against what I. And think Jim Montgomery is, is going to be fired. There's no fucking way that they keep that same coach if they lose again. That's two years in a row. One of the top teams in the league blown three one lead in the first round. Yeah. And the, the, the Leafs kept chance. their like management or their coaching. And uh, how many? How many? Round? How many like first rounds did? Babcock lose before the Leafs fired him. Four? 16, 17, 18, and 19. Yeah, so I, mean, I don't know. I mean, you I think, think the Bruins are going to be that reactionary about it? How can you not? I don't know, because the mean, Bruins have had, have had like, really good success the past few seasons in the regular season. Like, yeah, yeah you blow exactly. a couple I mean, shit, brownies, but... But the no, Bruins, the Bruins were the Leafs lost in the first round in 2019. The Bruins went to the Stanley Cup final. I know 2019 was five years ago, but like it's still like more like re- wait, that was, was Monty, the though. no, that was yeah. Bruce Cassidy. Yeah, Monty's only been with them two years. Yeah, okay, never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. But you think that okay, hmm. I just, I, it's just like how do you keep like how do you just like, defend that? Like clearly, there's something like they've they've had two really bad starts in five and six. They had one shot in the first period in both games. The faceoffs in the last game were eighty percent in favor of Toronto after the first period. They were sixteen to four. Yeah, three of the Leafs. Damn. Yeah, yeah and that's you just flaws. Like you can't 
you can't do that in the playoffs. And it's yeah. not like, you know, again, like you, you can say, yeah, it was reactionary. Sure. Right. It is. Yeah. But when you're the Bruins and you're held to this, you know, high uh, accountability and all that in, in the NHL and everything, like, I don't know, man. I mean, last year was one thing this year again, like it's fucking Toronto of all teams. Like, yeah, but exactly. Well, that's what I come back and say, like, it's the Bruins. You hold yourself to a high standard. How the hell does Sheldon Keefe still have a job? Well, that too. Like, if, the, if to me, if they're done in whatever round, I think he's gone. You think? Yeah, if they um, lose in the first round again, then he has to be. And they got like, the court for. I feel like yeah. if they lose, and it would be Marner, whatever round. You think it would be Marner? One hundred percent. Nylander got locked Marner in, and it's also Matthews is the other choice. That would suck, man. And Tavares has I, a no trade clause. I believe Riley does too. Oh, yeah. So that's all. You can't yeah. get rid of Matthews. You can't, and I guess yeah, Riley and Tavares have to stay. They'd be stupid to sign a massive the deal. They, they'd be stupid to get rid of Nylander. They just sign him. Matthews, they'd yeah. be just incredible. And also, different. Nylander's a really good playoff performer. Like he's probably yeah. their best playoff performer. Yeah, I mean, he just showed up tonight and scored two. Yeah. Yeah. So, man, but that, I that I feel so bad for Marner then. Yeah, I mean, he's just like, the odd he, guy. I mean, he's out, from but... Toronto. Like, he grew up, like, loving the Leafs. You guys ever see that video of him playing and throwing through Morgan Frost? And they're dangling through everybody. Mm-hmm. Are you saying so Morgan sad. Frost is, uh, has a Mitch Marner ceiling? <laughs> no, it's just it's <laughs> so funny. I love Morgan Frost. But I don't even know. Um, yeah, no, I mean, look, like, the Leafs, like, I don't know, man. Like, I, I, I just view them as I don't. I don't know. Like they, I don't think they're good in net. Um, even though they've had Wall these past two games, Wall's been really playing really well. Yeah, like, like, Wall's I think he has the best save percentage in the league right now in, in the playoffs. Yeah, it's probably that's only two games though. Yeah, but it's yeah, like it's, 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 it's a it's a pretty. It's speaking I want to check what the numbers were. Yeah, because yeah. like I, I checked say, it yesterday before today, he has a nine seventy save percentage. You guys got any thoughts on uh, the Rangers? Next closest is Swayman at nine fifty two. Sorry, what do you say? No, I was gonna say you guys got any thoughts on the uh, the one series that we do know is Rangers Canes. Ooh, yeah, out. I mean, I think the Rangers won that. It's gonna be a really good Canes. series. Canes, baby. I, I said from the beginning, and this is my kind of like no, narrative not. of it: is the Rangers come into it not prepared because they played the Capitals in round one. It's true. And, well, to be fair, they played the fucking the Islanders. Kings but... played the Islanders. Yeah, but he needs the time off, though, I think. No? Well, I mean, Islanders had some time off, too. But I, I mean a combination of time off and that, like... They suck. Capitals, I don't think the Rangers had to try much against the Capitals. Like, no. you know, the Capitals were, like, kind of in some of those games. I mean, fucking like, Ovechkin went pointless. Like, yeah. Like, I don't think that know, the Capitals were I mean. scoring against the Rangers. At no point that I think the, the Capitals, Capitals were going to win a game, though. Well, I, I, yeah, but like they were scoring. My point is, I think they were scoring because the Rangers were like, ah, who cares? Like it's it's like and, and, they weren't even remotely trying. Is my I think part of it too was like Ovechkin tried literally everything he could to get them I think there. He, was trying he just too hard. had nothing left. Yeah, just to get them there, like he just had nothing left. Because you like, know what I mean, like it was just especially like, when you're a veteran, you hit a certain point where you're just kind of stuck. And I feel like Ovi kind of hit that wall where he yeah, yeah. wasn't really scoring and couldn't get anything going that he was trying so hard to snap that. It's just, you know, it's just stuck in like purgatory. But yeah, I don't know. I, I just feel re- like he used so much energy to get them there that yeah. he had literally nothing left. Yeah, I mean, they ran out of gas. But yeah. then again, I don't really know how much gas they had to, to begin. So I mean, he had a minus 37 goal differential. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's it, it just absolutely brutal. I will say the Rangers. The Rangers are my cup pick. I wonder what Nicole Baker Bell did. The, the Rangers are my cup pick, so I, I'm not like, you know, I'm not hesitating to say that I think they beat the Canes because obviously, you know, I have them winning the, the whole thing. But any thoughts on uh, Vegas and, and Dallas? It's uh, three two stars after uh, five games. Yeah, I um I had stars as my pick, and early on in that series, I was looking like a, a bad choice. Um, but the stars are coming back surprisingly. Um, real happy about that. I guess we'll see how it ends. Um, I'm kind of, I feel like I'm kind of sleeping on the stars a little bit, even still. I mean, I have, I have Colorado beating them. Um, and I still stand by that. I think Colorado, I mean, I have Colorado winning the cup. 
Um, but I'm not viewing Dallas too much as a contender, and I feel like I'm probably wrong for that. Dallas uh, isn't a contender? The, I, I'm not viewing them as a contender, and maybe I should be. You should be. I mean, I, you should, yeah. I think you should be. 100%. I mean, I, I have them going to the West Final. Granted, I don't have them winning, but, I mean, it's kind of crazy to me that they could even be up on Vegas right now and you don't think they're a contender. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know why. I mean, I think I'm just so tunnel-visioned on the Avs that I'm not viewing, like, well, any other team in the West as yeah. a contender. I was I viewing the Avs and Winnipeg as my two top choices. So then once, yeah. like, I knew that whoever would win that series – that was my then top choice. I just wasn't focused on like any other Western I, team, which again is probably yeah. wrong, but uh, I see the, I see the three from the West most likely to go to the final are, or as the Avs, um, Vegas and Dallas for me yeah. personally, I have Vegas winning that. the series. I have them winning in seven. Um, I still think that, you know, that, could be where it's going. But I mean, I, I said before we even put our brackets in that Dallas is the real deal. Um, I, I really, I, that series feels like a Stanley cup final series. I mean, obviously they're both Western conference teams, but I feel like the, like the quality of teams could be a Stanley cup final. Yeah. yeah. And so it's crazy. that the I had, uh, the first round. Yeah. I had Dallas and six. Mm. So they win the sex game. They should yeah. Be good. But, okay. yeah. I mean, I, I, I like Dallas. I think they're deep. Um, I like their power play. I like Ottinger. Um, I, think I think they have a good D. They added Tanev, which I think has been a good, good add. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I like them. I think they're I, again, like I said, I think they're deep. Like I don't know how far they'll they'll go because I think I had them losing to Winnipeg in the conference final. Um, but uh, fuck yeah. me, your Brad is so screwed because you have Winnipeg <laughs> in the winning yeah. the conference final. Yeah, unfortunately. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I, I'm kind of with Will in the sense that, like, I'm not particularly high, uh, high on Dallas. But, I mean, I do think they're a contender. But I'm not personally high on them myself. I do think, to be honest, it was mostly a prediction that I said they were just going to the, the West Final. That was just like, you know, do I think that'll happen? Maybe not, but I could see it playing out that way. So that's pretty much what went into that decision. But I'm not really big on Dallas. I don't know why. Maybe it's because they don't have the... I mean, obviously, Jason Robertson's like their star player, but they don't have like the shiny toy who's like an absolute stud. Robertson's obviously very good, but he's not like, you know, McKinnon. I think, I think there's an argument for him being... I, yeah, well, I mean, McKinnon's a different animal, though. Yeah. yeah, well, that's what I mean. They don't have that guy who's like completely over the top, like Kucherov, McKinnon, like absolute, you know, just top dog status. Jason Robertson's very good, yeah. but yeah. I don't value him much higher than like I value a connect me a stamp coast really you know, I, I'm i not huge on anybody crazy. in Dallas really other than Ottinger I do like Ottinger I put Rod I put Robertson yeah. on the same tier as like Elias Pedersen that's what I was just I would take Pedersen over Robertson I would take Pedersen over Robertson so probably yeah. but I mean I think I would I take Pedersen it's a very even I think that's a very even kind of line there Robertson or Quinn Hughes Quinn Hughes, Quinn Hughes. I mean, they're they're two different types of players. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, okay, but in terms, of- I, I value I value the defenseman more. Fair. Yeah. I'm just Same. yeah. So I, mean, I, I I'm kind of with that. Like Robertson is kind of two 40, 40 goal seasons and one hundred point season already. Yeah, yeah. I just think he's Robertson's better. like not like in the play. Yeah, he's a great player, but like by the playoff standards, he's not like a star. Like almost every other team has like a player who's a level above him in the playoffs. I mean, Nashville doesn't. Um, I mean, I don't know. He's got 27 points in 31 playoff games. At 18 and 19 last year, he's 5 and 5 this year. They also have Joe yeah. Pavelski, who's Pavelski's like still very good. He's a huge just... playoff performer. He is. Yeah. That's just I don't the know what his stat line looks like this year, but I feel like it hasn't been that wild this year, but I haven't, yeah. I'm not sure on that. Um, yeah. I mean, like. I don't know. I, I just again, and I don't, I don't want to get it twisted that you know Robertson isn't like a, a star player. He very, he definitely oh, yeah. is. I just don't. How think many he's... points do you think Joe Pavelski has in the playoffs this year? Uh, Without looking, I mean, you asking or you saying it like that makes you want to say seven, but I probably would have guessed two. 
I, th I think it's the before. opposite. I think he's he, is he underperforming? I haven't really paid attention to the Dallas series as much. Is he? Uh, Chris. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go two. In the, in the playoffs right now. Yeah. Six. Zero. Oof. Yeah, I was okay. Yeah, that's what I that's thought. That's crazy to me. I thought he was wow. underperforming. Because he's a really like career, like career long. He's been a really good playoff performer. I mean, just looking. Uh, yeah, he's um, been mostly. He was point per game in the 187 last. One hundred eighty-seven career playoff games. One hundred thirty-nine points in those games. Seventy-three goals. Wow. So yeah, yeah they, I mean, Pavelski's been struggling a little bit, but the Stars are still getting it done. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I said, Jason Robertson, he's still an 80-point player. So, very good, obviously. But, I, you know, as far as, like... I think being... saying that you value him not much higher above Konechny is still... Yeah, that's yeah. I don't... Know. I don't... Okay, but let me I ask you this. I think ideally you have Konechny as, like, a second-line guy. Like Robertson's, under... like, a legit star. Like, yeah, but yeah. he's not really the same type of player, though, because Konechny is not necessarily, like, a defensive guy. Because I was just well, neither, talking strictly about Robinson. It. No, but I think Robertson might be a little better defensively than Konechny is. Maybe I not by time. In, in the same mold of like. I mean, he has 314 Ryan points in 292 games. Like a shit I mean, you have to figure. Konechny played 76 games this year. He had 68 points. Um, Robertson had. Robertson's coming to the league, and he's just been on 82 games. Yeah, I mean, so, he, yeah, he's yeah, he's struggling. Yeah, but game. that's a down year for Robertson and an up year yeah. for Konechny. Yeah. yeah, don't get me wrong; he did have a, a 109 point season last year, so he's definitely. <laughs> he, he had literally he's definitely well. What are we talking about? What are we he doing? From, from, yeah, he know. went from I mean, one to 45 to 79 to 109. He he's only got basically a 30 point increase every year. Yeah, but but like okay, but the know. point the point that I think. Paul was trying to make before he distracted from it by comparing him to Travis Connecting <laughs> is that like the other teams that we expect to win the first round, their like stars are all you can't compare them to Robertson. Like you've got even uh I mean Pedersen and Quinn Hughes are the closest, but then you got McKinnon, McCarr, then you've got um like Panarin, you've got I mean, I guess the Canes are the closest comp then. To that of like they probably don't have like a, a star comparable to Robertson, but Carolina? You, I, you, I would you... say that the stars or the, not the stars, I would say the Hurricanes have a lot more players comparable to Robertson. Like they have a lot of Jason Robertson. I think so too. You know what I, mean? I don't think they have players. Well, like, I don't think like, they... uh, like I would put Aho and like Svechnikov like in the same I don't think they have a lot of Jason yeah. Robertsons. I think they have a lot of I mean, I don't know. No, I think they have a lot of Rope Hintzes. I think that's what Carolina is. You yeah. don't agree with that? No, not in the slightest fucking bit. Rope <laughs> really? Hintz? Yeah. Rope oh, Hintz is a good second and forward. Yeah, and I think that's what mostly Carolina Rope is. Rope Hintz is better than you think. He's a top I, I know Rope Hintz, Rope Hintz or, uh, or Travis say that. Rope Hintz has uh, 310 points in 392 games. That's, a, that's a good good impression, actually. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I'd still probably go connect me just because of the edge and like, the other aspects. Uh -huh. I think it's a little bit more of like a... No, no over, over, Hintz. over Hintz. Over Hintz. Well, no, but Paul said... Over Rope Hintz. <laughs> you <laughs> you, you were just in your stars kick. You weren't paying attention. <laughs> 557 points in 598 games. He has 89 in... Oh, my... What do you... Dude... <laughs> Over Rope, is that Rope Hints? No, that's Aho. You said they You're have not a lot talking of Rope about Aho. You said you just fucking said it <laughs> that Rope. They have a lot of guys like Rope Hints. Yeah, I'm, I didn't say Sebastian Aho was one of them. <laughs> okay, then because like how, like how Dallas has Jason Robertson, they also have Rope Hints. Carolina has Sebastian Aho, the Jason Robertson, and then the Rope Hints in like uh, Jordan Stahl. It, well, Jordan Stahl is not a good example whatsoever. I think the Caravanian is the Jordan Stahl is more like yeah, the Joker. Yeah, like, or like against You know what I mean? Like guys Stahl. like that. I was many, Marty Nates. That's what I'm looking for. Stahl, I was no looking problem. for Marty Nates. Sorry, that's uh, the name I was looking for. Rope Hints has played six seasons in the NHL. How many of them do you guys think he scored thirty goals or more in? Three. I would say three. Yeah. Three. Uh, I'll go four. Three is correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, has played. 
games one, last season. He's, 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 he's a little bit four, older. Five, six, seven. He's played eight. How many of you think he's he's at thirty goals? Six. Probably six. Six. And the one year he had twenty nine, and the other two he had twenty four. So suck on them apples. <laughs> okay, that's that's good. Suck, suck on them apples. That's good. Yeah, I, dude. That's I don't know why. I don't know why I said Jordan Starr right there. I was looking for Marty Natchez. That was the player that was. I, yeah, I was like what the up. fuck, like. Yeah, no, I I meant Natchez, but Paul is just having um, an all timer of an episode. But you think yeah. <laughs> you think Aho is that on the level of Robertson? You really think Aho is that bad? No, I don't think he's on the level of Robertson. I mean, he's pretty close. <laughs> you know what? I'm actually kind of. I think he's nice. like. What the fuck? If, if Robertson is like, what are we doing here? If Robertson's A tier, I think Aho is like A minus. Sorry, sorry, be, no, sorry, sorry. Switched around, Roberts. If Roberts be is A tier, be slightly better, honestly. Yeah. Boy, there's, there's know, no just way just, we think that what? that Sebastian Ajo is worse. He's definitely up there. I mean, he had, Jason Robertson. He had 89 points this year. Granted, that was his career high. He's one of the top centers in the NHL. Career high. He had one season where he's like, what? Will he's insane, dude? Yeah, but you can argue at the same time that Robertson's only had one season because it was he's young and it was a 109 point season or whatever it was. Yeah, but, 10, I think. but your your peak being 109 <laughs> points versus your peak being 89, 89. and 78 yeah. games is a okay, huge. but it's two different things. One guy's it a center, depends on the, the other guy's a winger. Yeah. Yeah, but like, come yeah, there's, on. There's something that's <laughs> – it's, it's only 20 points. I do. Th- to be fair, oh, though, only I do twenty points. points. Whoa! <laughs> I mean, like, it's not right. like it's like a fucking forty-point increase. Uh, yeah. it's, it's one season of twenty points. Like this guy's con- four years of thirty 20 points is a pretty significant. Twenty gap. points. Okay, yeah, sure, right. That was a different time. That was that <laughs> was to <laughs> say. But 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 four years of thirty goals, and he's he won a Selgi before, right? I think. Mm, uh, I don't think so. I did he three time all star. Uh, I'm I don't remember what like ninety five percent sure he doesn't. He's won something. Yeah, no, he never won a selkie. Did he win anything, or am I stupid? <laughs> um, well, <laughs> he win anything. Two things can be true. It's like Patrick looking for his award. <laughs> That's good, Will. Yeah, I mean, he got no. nominated for a team award. <laughs> yeah, he won but... a team MVP. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I definitely didn't think he won a Selkie. And I will say, I, I think a lot of what we're talking about right now is being a little bit dictated by recency bias, but like, that's guys, kind of what makes it fun. I mean, guys are crude, plus Robertson's earlier in his career. So, I, like, just com- yeah. comparing the early years of Ajo's career to where Robertson's at now, I think Robertson's same... a better player. Yeah, but it's like, it's the, same, it's like the same increase. Mm, I mean, <laughs> we're also. Not necessarily. We're, we're, I think I think you have to I, you have to consider the the point that it's a center versus a winger. Sure, because Aho has more of a defensive impact. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess if you're asking the question, who would you rather have on your team? Like, who would you rather have on your first line, Aho or Robertson? It becomes a more difficult conversation. But if you're looking yeah. at your like production, I mean, he's about to have 600 games played. He's only played one. Basically played every season, where without injuries. Um, yeah, I mean, I will he came say, in the I, NHL and like like fifty forty nine points on a fucking hurricane. Is team. Aho is Aho taking the Barkov mantle of most underrated player in the league? He could be. I think I think it's I, up there. He's like, up there. he might be. I like he might be up there. He had eighty nine points, guys. Like, come on, like like stop, like like okay. Well, he's fucking like, plus thirty four. <laughs> on the canes though like what is the cane yeah. average goal differential <laughs> why does that so what that that just because there's a difference negatively between... impacts aho no because you there's a the same thing about the stars okay but there's a difference between you play on the canes and your team is nasty in the regular season and your team just always has a great goal differential versus like you are like, nasty, and like he has eighty nine points. Like, okay, I just eighty nine points to me. I just don't think is that wild. He had thirty six like, goals and fifty three assists. That's that's almost a forty goal season, and you know fifty five apples on top of it. 
I would love to have somebody on the Flyers with 89 points. Yeah, and played 78 I mean, I games. Do, but like, and plus 34. And only had 36 penalty minutes. Let me let me kind of put this in Flyers terms for a second, right? Oh, this you, is, you, don't this think, good. you don't think 89 on goals. the Canes is impressive, right? So you, 89 on the Canes isn't like too impressive to you? I don't think it's that absurd. It's 32 okay. penalty I, points. So in 2019-20, in right, when the Flyers were seen as like one shooting of the top in the league, He's still going. <laughs> and plays almost 20 minutes a night. Like, what the fuck still are going. you guys seeing here? <laughs> so, all right, for example, right? And- in 1920, <laughs> in 1920, when the Flyers were like the absolute top dogs in the league other than like two teams and looked like they could have been making a run at the cup, Konechny led the team in points. Do you know how many points he had? 63. Not- One. 61. 61. 61. And that was his career high at that point. Because all the points were distributed mostly evenly. Coots only had like 40-something or 50-something. Like, it was... And that was like Selkie-level Coots. That's what that was. That was prime Coots. So, it, the points were distributed evenly. I don't think... Sometimes the best teams, the points aren't necessarily like flooded to one guy. That's why you see like all the... A lot of the rebuilding teams have like one or two studs that just take out like, you know, 70, 80 points a season and the rest of the team blows. With... The Canes, I think, is kind of similar to that. Like, Ahu putting up 89 points is pretty damn impressive, along with the fact that he's still good defensively. Like, I don't think – I will I don't, know. I will I don't say, see your vision there. And that's why I think the, the Canes are built to go he's, deep in the playoffs, although I still have – to bring the conversation back to where it began, I still have the Rangers <laughs> beating the Canes in the second round. His, his, <laughs> his Corsi percentage is 61.5 for this Oh, year. my God. And his five one five. Chris is just scrolling through money puck right now. His sixty five. Uh, hold on. His five one five tied right, and so in tie games he's sixteen points. In shorthanded, he only has two power play. Thirty two power play points. That's his most of his career. Fifty six shots on the power play. Please Even tell strength, us his wingspan next. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. I mean, I just don't get it. Like, the oh, numbers, every, every metric supports this guy being fucking sick. And it's just like, I don't think he's not sick, but like, I don't think he's better than uh, than Robertson. Oh, All right. Well, Will, let me give you an opportunity to, to talk so about some who's, people. Who's, who's better than here. Robertson, then? That are not going to end up playing each other. <laughs> why are we? No, 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 no. Let, let, let's give Will his no, spotlight. Let, real let's, quick. Yeah, let's talk about this. I'm, I'm going to give no, I'm going to give him his spotlight. I, I think, all right. If we're gonna say like young, like young goal scorers, who is up there with Robertson? Who's up there with Robertson? Young goal scorers. Can you say Robertson. Jarvis? Could we could we talk Jarvis or is that not right? I don't think that's right. Just on the Canes? No, I'm just saying. Like it just come to my mind because we talked about Carolina, but I can't think really of anyone else. I mean, we we mentioned Pedersen. Okay, yeah, yeah let's do Pedersen. Pedersen's a lot better than Robertson, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm just yeah, sleeping. Oh, it's just as good as Patterson. <laughs> I mean, Jesus I Christ, Christ, Jesus Christ, what? No, nah. fuck me. I mean, dude, no, nah. yeah, okay, yeah, he all right, fuck me then, yeah. He's, I mean, yeah, he's no. got the 100 point season, but <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's Chris similar. Like, points in, around, in like, like we don't mean anything. Oh, it's just 100 points. Yeah. No, I'm not saying it's just 100 he's points. Only got 100 no, 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 I'm not saying it doesn't mean anything. But like, I don't know, man. Aho is just very good to me. I think he's very good. I think it's Nobody's just because he's underrated he's that you're so passionate about it. No, I just think it's like, I don't know, man. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A wild Wayne Simmons is somewhere. <laughs> No, but yeah. I mean, I, no, nobody's saying that Sebastian Ajo's not very good. Like, we're saying he's a very good player. But it's just that, I don't know. You, you're, like, you're making good points with, like, the center thing. But I, I just, I, I think that Robertson might just be, like, a half step above. No, just a half step. Sorry. Maybe even sorry. a quarter step. Sorry, Sally. I can't do it. I know he's Chris got, posed the question. He's got 89 uh, points. Here we go. <laughs> they got the same fucking points this year. Pedersen and Aho. 
Oh man. Pedersen is the same amount of points in four more games. Aho's better. Sorry. It doesn't matter. Let's go. Pedersen's yes. also like legitimately one of the best defensive forwards in the league. So is Aho. Yeah. No. Right. no. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, Let's South, go, South, South winner, right? He won the South Sea Yeah. Yeah. Who? I know Chris mentioned Aho, the, uh... Chelsea, right? Wait, say it again? He said I'm, he I'm used, used on it. <laughs> clowning on Chris for saying Aho probably won the Selkie. I uh, could have sworn he was in Selkie voting. He didn't win. That's what it was. Gotcha. But fuck me. Okay. But anyway, well, go ahead. Yeah. So I, I know you mentioned the younger guys earlier. You asked in the question, like, oh, which younger guys, right? So Will, kind of transitioning here from our long-awaited transition of, of you know, Carolina hockey. Thank God that's fucking over. Um <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There uh, we go. Yeah. Flyers, baby. Very, very good, Paul. Um, biggest name that comes to mind for me would be Cole Eiserman. Um, but that being said, really, he could just be paying attention most likely to that entire USA team. Um, you've got Trevor Connolly, Cole Eiserman, Cole Hudson. Um, granted, Eiserman would likely be the person he'd be looking at for that first pick. Uh, the other guys would be potential, like, for that second, like the Florida pick, or maybe even a second round pick for some guys that could be in there. Um, but yeah, uh, Iserman, he's having himself quite the tournament. And he's one of the biggest uh, names of discourse for this year's draft. And definitely will be one of the biggest names to watch out for. Iserman heading into this year was viewed as probably one of the top three or four guys. And then he's really falling off a lot in that Basically, his game is being picked apart as entirely one-dimensional. Um, basically, it's believed that he's all offense and his play away from the puck is non-existent. Um, so, Iserman, he's going to be a really interesting case in that if a team is picking for upside, I wouldn't be shocked if he goes, like, top eight. Likely doesn't go like before like fifth, but like if a team, I was going to really say, do you, do you think he falls to twelve? I think so. You know, is he is he is he going out of the top ten? I I think he falls to the Flyers. I don't even know if the Flyers take him. Um, okay. I just I think he just has such like a high risk profile that like I think he's kind of very Zach Benson esque of last year. Not that he would fall for the same reasons because Zach Benson fell because he was small and he wasn't like a, a fast straight line skater, mm-hmm. but in that scouts don't like taking risks and Iserman is that um especially that high whole Caulfield written all over it it kind of yeah I mean Caulfield's a little smaller um but yeah he definitely is that really has... a bad thing though what that, that he's he smaller to to be like if so if Iserman has Caulfield written all over him right oh, is that no. really a bad thing no. Because Cole Caulfield's still an incredible goal scorer. Oh, absolutely. Well, no, I'm. I'm. What I was saying was. You mean like the fact Will that the team's passed on him? Yeah, that the team's passed on him, and yeah. if the Flyers end up passing on, you know, Eiserman, oh, yeah, I just have a feeling that Eiserman's going to end up being this like really dynamic player that ends up being a steal for his draft position. Mm-hmm. It absolutely you know? could be, um, but I mean, it, it's interesting. Uh, I'm not sold on him. Part of me hopes that Iserman is gone long before the Flyers even get there. Because for one thing, that bumps someone else down who I would probably want to take as well. Yeah. But also, I would be scared to take Iserman. I personally am. Granted, if he's there and the Flyers pick him, suddenly I'm Iserman's number one biggest fan. Right. Um, but I am scared by the general scouting consensus of him that there are some major concerns. And there's a part of me that just hopes that that's not going to be something we're going to have to worry about as Flyers fans. Um, But, you know, it would make sense that Danny Briere wants to see him, Uh, especially him, because if you're the general manager of a team and you hear, yeah, there's a guy who might be the best goal scorer of this entire draft class and one of the best offensive forwards. Oh, yeah. And he might fall to us at at 12th overall, if you're Danny Barrere, you're like, why? You want to go and see him play. Like you want to speak to him. Like you want to, so it it makes a lot of sense that he would be kind of the one they're looking at. Especially like if, if I think like if they're, 
if you're looking at a guy there too, like in the potential he could fall, they gotta be like sitting there, like just like licking their chops, like waiting for him. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, yeah. Um, Tijiginla's also at that <clears throat> tournament. Um, he looks very good. Yeah, um, mm. might be one of Chris's favorite players from the draft so far since we. It's the only him. one I've watched, so I yeah. think so. Yeah, Tij, I underrated him to start. Um, he's definitely moving up my my list. He's been. Where's he, where's he at in your list? I have to reevaluate. Last I put him was nine. Um, okay. I'm thinking he can make a case for eight. Um, and again, my my list tends to uh, go more on upside. Um, and like I, I don't tend to love the safer picks as much. Where where has your list like in comparison to most of the insiders like TSN? Like you know Bob McKenzie has his list. Dregs like of those guys. Like do you have one that like yours are probably the closest to? Um. <laughs> Not that I can think of particularly, to be honest. I don't look at those lists too much. Um, right, you kind of just try to make it whatever you see. Yeah, I, I try to look at my own things. So I don't want to be influenced too much by them. Um, right, exactly, yeah. Especially those bigger name guys, because a lot of times they'll go based off of NHL scouts. And like I, I want to have my own opinion, but then also like I don't want to be, especially because I'm viewing it from the flyer's angle is if the right. Flyers go with a safe guy who's like sure to be second liner, but like won't be anything more than that. We don't want the Flyers taking that guy. We want the Flyers going for the guy who has that first line upside. Is so it like Marco I, Casper a little bit, you think? Uh, Who? Marco Casper. Yeah. Who do you think is like, is that like a Ginla you think? Maybe I, I truthfully I'd have to watch more of Marco Casper to come up with a good answer for you there. Okay. Um, I wasn't giving scouts a ton of attention during that draft. And because he's now not a Flyers uh, prospect, I haven't. Um, yeah. In that right. But, so, okay. So then who, before I let you finish your point, who like, I guess in the NHL, not in the NHL, anybody, who would you compare Tizigin the most closest to? That's a really interesting question. Yeah. And then like the follow-up, does he have like an NHL comp? Yeah, and you can't say his dad. <laughs> yeah, no, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't say his dad. Um, I wouldn't I have think, a good I answer I have a, in the I, amount of time I've given to look. So, so who, who do you think, Chris? I was going to say kind of like Tyler Bertuzzi a little bit. I can see that. Um, yeah. I think he has higher upside than Bertuzzi. But yeah. the way he plays the game is the somewhat similar. Check and yeah. Similar I, skating style. and For sure. And I would, I would probably need to give... I haven't given a Ginla my full look yet. I, I've the, that's why I said he's still like moving because I I'm waiting. I think I've seen like one three and a half minute YouTube video, so that shows you yeah. how much I've watched. But yeah, he he has a really interesting style in that he's like he kind of does a little bit of everything. I feel like, like he was he was a really good goal scorer. Um, he, he's Sorry. one of the better goal scorers in the draft for sure. Yeah. He's he kind of skates like a power forward. Um. And then he has like really good edges as well. Like he's pretty regular, like dancing around players. Yeah, he's like strong. Uh, Antonio Strange is a little bit with the edge work. Mm -hmm. Like he really um, can uses his you know edges of his feet and shit. Yeah, if he if he hits, he's a really good, well rounded forward. Um, he he's not gonna be like overly dynamic in like one specific thing. Middle six or top six if he fully pans out. Oh, if he if he fully tops out, I would say he's. I see a realistic ceiling for him as like third best forward on a first line, um, okay. like that. I think that's a realistic ceiling that he could very plausibly hit. Um, and like Aho. Who? Like Aho. Oh God. <laughs> okay, I'm honestly, I I refrain from saying it. When when I thought of a comp, and I, I don't know enough about his Tijigin list. It's Aho, oh, isn't it? I was thinking Aho in the sense that they're well-rounded and it's like unreal. might have similar splits. Sick. Um, but I don't I don't think they're similar enough. But that was my brain first thought of, but that might just be that we've heard his name. Six uh, thousand uh, times on this one episode. A hundred yeah. times in the last mm -hmm. half hour. You know, he was 61% uh, on Corsi this year. All right, continue. all right, cool. Moving on. Um, yeah. Uh, um, 
Yeah, so a couple interesting names that I'm sure Danny Barrera is paying attention to. Um, now let's get into Mitchkov. Uh, yeah. Let's else has some other things to talk yeah, about. Like... Um, Mitchkov, some interesting news came out. Um, yeah. Basically, uh, the uh, Alexander Medvedev, um, uh, basically one of the chairman, I believe, of... Yeah. Um, Ska, don't care, saying it. There we go. Uh, oh, God. He basically go said... Ahead, that go ahead, Paul. Just say Belarus and we'll be good. <laughs> Belarus. Um, it's good. Basically, there is a legitimate chance, according to him, that Mitchkov won't be playing for them as soon as uh, June. There would be a decision on that. Um, basically, there would be a clause in his contract, though, that he would go back to Russia as opposed to the Phantoms. Not that that's something we would really worry about, to be honest. Um, I would be shocked if he was yeah. sent down, if he did come over. Um, but yeah, it's kind of crazy. Um, we were just talking, or on a somewhat recent pod, probably around the deadline, we were saying that realistically, if Mitchkov would, was going to come over this summer, he probably would have come over once his season finished with Sochi. Um, but maybe that seems like now it's not true because the decision might not be made yet. Um, truthfully, I think this might be not as significant as it sounds. Um, to me, it comes off more as a, hey, Roman Rotenberg, the head coach of his team in Russia there. Yeah. Like, you can't just do whatever you want with him. Right. Like, you better like I think it's kind of pressure coming on Roman Rotenberg from Medvedev. I think that's yeah. what it mostly is. But there's it some positive be. things that also came from it in that Medvedev said they have an extremely good relationship with Philly, um, mm. which has some other relevancy now in the Zavragan trade. Um, yeah, that that relationship going forward will now be helpful uh, since Zavragan is now part of that club as well. Yeah. Um, so there's some good things there regardless of the decision. Um, but if, if Mitchkov is here in June, um, my question to you guys, is the rebuild still on or do you want them to start becoming a bit more buyers? If you get Mitchkov for next season, I think you play next season with whatever, you know, whatever, you, whatever you can fit with your, with your lineup and your team, and then you bolster up. Yep. Yeah. Give it a season to kind of let Settle it in. simmer a little bit, yeah, and then towards very very yeah. next off season. Yeah. Right. Oh my god, that's good. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I don't want. I don't want. I don't. I don't want Mitchkov around with it towards this year. I don't think he will be. Why? I don't think he will be. I think. It, I think that Briere and and Jonesy would kind of sit him down and be like, "I, I do not fuck with this kid." Yeah. The other thing, though, with Torts is part of me wonders, and and Chris, just tell me if you think this is possible. Is it possible that because Torts said he, he called him the Mad Russian, um, yeah. amazing, amazing moniker, by the way, going to be just a hilarious name for him throughout his career. Um, I I do not want Torts to be the one that gives him like his his like you know the grade eight nickname, you know. Well, I, I mean, sorry, okay. I have to cut you off. Go ahead. I mean, fair, fair. But do you, don't you guys think it's possible that Torts would say something along the lines and even do something along the lines of like, Mitchkov is bigger than me to this team and kind of be like, like I, I could very well see Torts Publicly? saying like, Mitchkov yes. is the future of this team. Yeah. And I don't see him. I would hope that Torts wouldn't interfere with him and would understand just how important he is. I see what uh, you mean. I would hope that's the case. I think publicly, I think George does a really good job of saying all the right things and saying like, he's been in it long enough. Yeah. Like he knows what to say. Mm -hmm. I do think there are some other things that this season that I think rubbed guys the wrong way. Um, I don't necessarily know who or what or what was said or anything, but I, it's just a gut feeling I have. I do think with Mitchkov in the sense of if they are to get Mitchkov for next season and Tortorella is still the head coach, 
I would like to think that there probably would be something along the lines of like, hey, I'm not going to fuck this up for this kid in the city because they've been wanting it for a long time. That said, is that same thing going to happen privately? That's my concern. So I think there's been a mix of certain things being said publicly versus what's actually happened privately. Mm -hmm. Because what I was going to say was now that you mention it, I can 100% see Tortorella saying something like that, but at the same time, and let's let's assume, right, in this situation that he not only he says it, but he actually, you know, fulfills it, and he he doesn't bench him or anything like that. You know, he doesn't get healthy scratched or whatever in his first week as a pro. But let's just sit back and really ask ourselves the question: just because Mitchkov is the future of the team and he's the superstar that everybody's been waiting for in the tactics of Tortorella. Is that even fair? Is that like, like not fair, but is that acceptable that your superstar player would just get a free pass because we've been waiting for him and Morgan Frost or whoever else over here is still getting benched, still getting sat just because they're not in the same situation as Mitch. I don't know if he's going to get a free pass. Yeah. I'll ask you guys this. The first time Mitchkov tries that Michigan move, is he getting sad or is he still playing? Faraby did well, it, and he, he was still playing. Yeah, I'm just yeah, saying. but Faraby that Faraby was having a. I remember that game. Faraby had a great game. So I mean, what's he gonna do? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, like okay. Did anybody have a great game that game? I'm Faraby, I thought Faraby played Faraby really did. well. I don't even remember yeah. when Faraby did it. That was the Boston Hall of Fame game. Oh the fuck that! Horrible that game. Yeah, no. I, I, here's the thing. I think, and the other thing worth considering, and let me play you out another scenario here. Torts always says how he loves when guys come and like call him out and like yeah. talk to him. He does, and say he that. loved it when Frost did it. Do you think for a second there's a chance that Mitchkov isn't storming into his office the moment he's scratched, or like, like the vibes I get from Mitchkov and all the things we've said or and heard no, about? I don't it. think he's gonna pull Kevin Hayes. No, no, that's what I'm saying either. Yeah, I'm saying if Mitchkov gets scratched or like, like, hey, I if John Terrell is like, I need you to do this. So you're I, saying like he goes in there and just like storms into his office and gives him a piece, a piece of his mind? Yeah, and Torts would love no. that. No, no, because you he doesn't. I can't see really Mitchkov that. doing that. He, I think he, it will be hard because I don't know how much English he knows. That's what I said. He doesn't well, speak English. That's the one thing. So no. But like outside of that, I feel like he's... Yeah, although it would be pretty funny to see Tortorella. Like, it, it would be pretty funny to see Tortorella get yelled at by a translator. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I'm not worried about it, to be honest. Uh, granted, I don't want yeah. Torts being the coach for more than a year of Mitchkov, really. I still can't I believe don't... we're having this fucking conversation that Matt Bay Mitchkov's like in this organization. Like yeah. it's just insane. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. It, it's like a, it's like a pinch me scenario. I was at a minor league baseball game when they drafted him. I was like, really? I didn't, they had the NHL draft up on a TV, and I was just, sta- I was the only guy in Memphis, Tennessee, standing there, like in front of the TV, <laughs> watching the NHL draft. That's and good. when they drafted Mitchkov, I went nuts. Yeah. And the, the person I was there with was like, "What is this?" And I was like, "You have no idea. <laughs> like, this is crazy." You yeah, know what's really was... interesting about the date, the timeline that Medvedev was talking about? He what? said that I don't know. Isn't it just kind of? perfect timing that Medvedev said that a decision would be made probably by the end of June because development camps the first week of July. Mm-hmm. Also, mm. well, but I also, I and don't know what just on. come out and pull like a whole like WWE thing and have Mitch Kov announce the first pick of the draft. <laughs> and like he, he's with the team and he comes <laughs> out and it's like, it's like, who's this? And you see Mitch Kov running out. Is that Matt Bay Mitch Kov's music? He comes out wearing the paper bag from two years ago and he demasks himself. <laughs> and he fucking Mitch Kov. <laughs> Could you imagine? The bag on fire? Yeah. Oh, um, in the full WWE. The other thing that's worth noting, uh, it said the exact quote was, decision on Mishkov's future basically was expected to be, and the, the key words were, no later than end of June. Right. So, like, like Perfectly yeah, like, end lining of June up with like, But I feel like a lot of us are thinking of it as, like, oh, we'll hear by the end of June. We could hear, like, tomorrow. Like, the specifically the no later than that to me reads as like 
could be any time. There's a good chance, like, yeah. before yeah. then. Yeah. And, like, I don't think it will know, be. Okay, like, I realistically don't think we hear tomorrow, but, like, we could hear early June. Like, I like that's a very real chance. It could be next uh, week. No. Yeah, Did like, you see I, the people I, trying to, like, internet sleuth where Matt Bay Mitchkov is online? Yeah, he, like, he, he posted a picture in his hotel room. People were yeah. like, where is he? And it was, like, a European clear, power outlet. And everyone yeah. was like, calm down, the, calm down. Yeah, the outlet, yeah. The outlet proves it to be nothing. No. Um, I just love that Flyers, like, the Flyers fandom, like, what Matt Bay Mitchkov has done to this fan base, you know? Like, oh, yeah. it's very, like, because my friend's a big Arsenal fan, and he, like, shows me, like, the crazy stuff that goes on, like, the Arsenal subreddit, where, like, people are, like, tracking flights and stuff, and Flyers fans are, all like, almost to that level with Matt Bay Mitchkov, and I think that's so cool. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. yeah I still don't think it comes I, over. Yeah. But... I, I can't wait until this kid gets here. Like, I'm... It, it it's gonna be like, like it, it's gonna be like Lindros. Like it's gonna be like watching someone literally take over in a, a, a yeah. game, and it's gonna be incredible. Can you guys imagine development camp if Mitchkov is here? Oh my god, there's there literally will be nowhere to breathe in Voorhees. You're gonna have to get there so early. It's yeah. gonna be so difficult to cover. I, I, will, I will camp out in the middle of the parking lot like GameStop is releasing a new Halo Three, <laughs> something <laughs> like that. Where I will just fucking sit there for day. I I, I yeah. would I would sleep there a week. I I, yeah. I would mop the floor. I would do literally anything <laughs> to be there wow. for that. I swear to be out there selling this hot is, dogs. This is yeah. I will yeah. I'll be yeah, I mean, sitting dude. there at ballpark Franks right outside. <laughs> on a real, on a real, that the day that that happens, and granted, I still don't think he's going to come over this summer. I think it'll be a little bit of a wait still. Yeah. Um, I think maybe next year. Here. Yeah, maybe maybe next year. I, it's just fun to talk about all the optimism, but um, on a real, the day that he is here and he's you know on the roster for development camp, I I can't wait, but I also just like am dreading how crowded it's going to be in there because that's going to be impossible to cover. <laughs> so it's yeah, I mean I don't know, definitely excitement, but I would yeah. say tempered excitement. Yeah, for those of you who don't know. Uh, Owen is actually the creator of the Mitchkov Wawa. Um, <laughs> yeah, the infamous Mitchkov Wawa meme. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty early on in the Owen Owen's tenure with um, Bayer Media here. But yeah, uh, yeah, was, yeah, it was. That was um that one that one had its that one had its uh had its moment for sure. Um, yeah, that one did numbers. Th- threw that one together real quick in my lunch break. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I have to bring that one out again once he once he makes his his landing here and i hope that he i hope a picture like a real picture of him at a wawa exists eventually it's like the exact <laughs> the same trick. just yeah he just it. It. yeah <laughs> that'd be so funny i'll show up at Voorhees with a wawa like coffee cup hey uh mitch cop can you pose with this for me real quick you should get your you should get your edit like printed out onto a poster yeah. and have him sign it <laughs> stand up front of a green screen on do a giveaway that's a good giveaway in the future. Poster. Give somebody a, a uh, give somebody like twenty bucks at media day. Yeah. Hmm. That's good. Uh, well, let's get into the bragging here. Um, yeah. So already, but yeah, sure. I mean, like the bragging, like um, you know, he gets, he get traded to SK St. Petersburg. Um, same team and organization for Mitchkov. Uh, signed a three year deal. Ends in twenty twenty seven. He'll be twenty one uh, when it's done. Um, any thoughts here? I so I've kind of been texting Chris about this throughout the day. I wanted to save it for the pod because I I do think it could be a good thing. Um, I've seen a lot of people. There's a bunch of different theories, and Will, I know you kind of alluded to one of them earlier. Was the the, the theory that I believe it was a guy named Jake on Twitter. I think it was Jake L or something like that. He came up with this idea that the Zavrigan signing could be kind of like a smoke screen along with the Mitchkov uh, report going out there to kind of wake up Rotenberg like hey you know uh, you mentioned like he's he's the head coach of the team but he's also like the president he's also uh he's got like GM three positions the head coach in the org. yeah like, he's got like yeah yeah he's got like every position in the org and it, it's crazy and you know the theory was like hey I wonder if you know this is just kind of like a wake up call because Russia obviously wants their their stars to be equipped for the NHL level and, and show out as soon as they get there. So 
that could be one of the theories, but personally, and it's definitely the most optimistic take, but if Mitchkov is not only coming over, but could be coming over sooner, why wouldn't it be a good sign that Zavrigan gets straight into the team that Mitchkov is not only on, but the Flyers already apparently have good communications with? You know what I mean? Uh, To me, it just, it screams like it could be a good idea. But there's also the other side that I've seen people, you know, kind of theorizing that maybe there's a lot of fans that think it was almost like a trade-off, you know, like, oh, you guys get Mitchkov early, but Zavrigan... Yeah, like an incentive to, to get Mitch Gov really, you have to give us African. My question, my counter would be, what power do the Flyers have over making another KHL team trade a guy to another KHL yeah. team? Like that's, that's my that, thought exactly. That would be my counter. <laughs> like, yeah. what power do the Flyers have in that situation? The, the only the only on. argument would be not that he's traded. The only thing you could say there is, hey, we won't sign Zavrigan. Right. If you give us Mitchkov. Right. That's the that's the thing you could make, but I just don't see that as Yeah, I don't see it either. I don't see that angle. I think it's all good news. I mean, three years is like, you know, maybe you would have liked to see him a little bit sooner, but like he's a goalie. Like he's not gonna be yeah. like you he needs to develop for more than three years anyways, so fine. Yeah. yeah. Um for and- me I, I also sorry, I'm gonna cut you off. I also looked at just I think with, with Zavrigan, like I mean, I, I like I was talking about this with Paul, like the idea that they have Urson, Fedotov, and Kolosov. Like it, it's kind of a no-brainer, I think, for Zavrigan to sign a little bit of a longer deal because it's like, does he really see himself in any mix of getting any any NHL time or AHL time with Kolosov? You know what I mean? And and, and Will, like you said, with Peterson earlier, like does that even factor into the fact that he's played well and and they're in the playoffs now and all that too, like? I don't know. Like, I think it's probably the age and 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 stuff like that. Yeah, um, yeah. And the and the biggest thing again, I think, is that they now we know that the clubs have good communication. Yeah, um, right. at least we think. Know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, well, that's I mean, what we did have said it. You'd be, sh- I'd be shocked if he went out and was like, "We have yeah, really on live TV yeah. too." Yeah, yeah. And he said it like multiple times. Like, it wasn't just a quick. It was like he right. reiterated. So like that's good, you know. Um, you want the Flyers to have contact with him. You want that kind of connection. Um, I think it's great that Zavergin and Mitchkov might be playing together. I mean, maybe Mitchkov comes over early, and that's not the case. But I think it's absolutely good. Um, I really don't see any bad in this, realistically. Yeah, yeah. The the only bad is that, and you just mentioned Mitchkov and Zavergin playing together. Mitchkov might not even be playing. Sure. That's the, the the issue there is that Mitchkov got snubbed completely. Wyatt, our our guy Wyatt, he wrote a really good article on uh, how Mitchkov essentially got robbed of a spot on the U25 roster for Russia because the head coach is Roman Rottenberg, who is also the head coach of St. Petersburg, who played him in one game and then sent him down to Sochi. So it's you know not looking too likely that that relationship is going to work out. It's very you know, Tortorella, Kevin Hayes written all over it. And I'm not sure how much further it's going to be able to go down the tracks before it just, you know, goes off the rails. But that's what makes this potential earlier arrival rumor so strong is the fact that there's a shitty relationship and he clearly wants to come to Philly. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Yeah. So rest of the summer kind of stuff like that. Um, Coots switches his agent now under Pat Brisson. Um, some other names that kind of Coots is, is kind of, or at least that, that Brisson is at least under, um, or is, has done in the Flyers org. It would be, uh, Gendron, York, or Johnson, Flyer, obviously, for, uh, this bit of this year, Nick Sealer, uh, Drew, Kopitar, Larkin, Tavares, McKinnon, and Crosby. Um, and just another little quick, uh, tidbit on Johnson as well, since I mentioned him, the Flyers are open to keeping him. Um, that was interesting, I thought. Um, so, yeah, any thoughts on uh, on Coots? Um, people have said there's in- interesting implications with that, as in, like, for what reason is he changing agents? Um, it, I will say it, it's worried me a bit. Um, 
yeah not exactly the best thing especially when coots i know was pretty tight with the family of the agent that he had before and all that too um the guy who tore it's called a piss ant um i don't know i mean i i've heard some things on this i can't really say them here and i'm not going to but it's it i'm a tad bit worried i'll say that it's it's not the most clean think. situation but no it's, it's not also I, I don't know guy who just fucking named captain yeah um, i don't know if it's as dire as everybody's making it out to be like oh coots is gonna request a trade tomorrow like i don't know if it's that level but there's definitely um you know more to it than i think meets the eye yeah can i can i give a really hot take here that nobody's gonna like go ahead is it is it the worst thing in the world if coots requested request a trade personally i don't think so i don't know i, so. I mean i look, look like i love I, I i don't even want to say i, I really like jean couturier yeah and he like you know him and lawton are kind of like the final remnants of you know the flyers Homer. teams that i grew up with yeah. yeah and so i don't want to see him go but purely like if i'm playing you know nhl franchise mode and Sean Couturier comes to me and requests a trade. I don't mind off like getting rid of that contract. I mean, Whether or not it can get done, I think that that trade would have that. to be messy. Is, I feel is like the only, the only yeah, I, I feel like the only reason people are saying that is because of the injuries. Like that count, mm-hmm. that contract looked like a fucking steal when it was signed, and the guy was it's, fresh yeah, off of a so Yeah, but you can't you can't it's like discredit so the injuries though. No, but I mean, at you least the guy was because like, they changed the entire. Play. And, and yeah, he, they, he he can play though, but at what year. level is the point? Like they changed I mean, the entire course. I, I, don't think, it's, I think it's a, for how. I mean, look at TJ Oshi. Yeah, he's struggling. TJ Oshi, we were just talking about how he can barely like stand up sometimes. Yeah. Like that's going to be Sean Couturier by the by the end of this contract. It's also it might not even be the end. It might that's be not in the middle. My yeah, it might be. It might be like in two years. Yeah, but that's not even my on the thing, right? The contract, it's it's not a bad contract by any means, in my opinion. I don't this think it's a either. good contract uh, for a rebuilding Flyers team. That's where my answer turns to no. Yeah, no, I, I don't agree. think that's the kind of contract you want as a position and a guy of his age. Yeah, and that's what I mean. For the like, timeline not, of the Flyers. I'm yeah. not saying he's not worth the money and he's not worth the term. I'm saying that there's a lot of question marks around how healthy he's going to be going forward. And I know that's, you know, no fault of his own. I'm not saying that, you know, Coots is playing himself out of the organization or anything like that. I'm just saying for where the Flyers are at right now as a team and as an organization, that contract is not a good one to have on the, like, you know, in the system. Yeah. And so if he like, if he wants to move on, it would suck. Like it, it, it would hurt me personally, just because again, I like Sean Couturier, but it might end up being for the for the you know greater good. Greater now good, that being yeah. said, I don't think, I don't think he's going to request a trade. I don't think he's going to be traded. I like I I don't I I, I kind of think that this whole thing is a little bit of a nothing burger. Even but... if you do request a trade does it actually get facilitated like is there anybody that's willing to take that on that, right now? yeah like if you end up trading him it's gonna like if you can trade him it's I gonna mean, be it's a mess pro rob. they almost traded sandheim yeah but pro rob is so much pro, younger pro rob. Proof he's durable that's way yeah. different they almost I mean, traded yeah, come yeah, but they, they would have gotten still a bigger, they would have gotten what, a bigger contract more. and like it took three teams to do it like i don't think it would be easy I mean, like yeah, for me, I just look at it like Rob is polar opposite end of Couturier. Like he's he's younger, he's shit. more durable, I'm not, I'm he's in a different saying, position. Like, yeah, I get, I get, I get that. Like to me, Provorov, he you know he can play like a one D. He's not a one D, but he can play like it. Um, you know, I'm, I, I look, I've always been a Coots guy. I I, I like Coots yeah. a lot. I think there's, I think it's more of the attachment from when I was a child, like just the involvement. Yeah of him yeah. kind of each year and then like he signed the contract i mean he was like he was like when we talked about like underrated players like who's was in that category and underpaid like the guy made four point fucking three million dollars in one selkie like mm-hmm. th- that's like unheard of 
So, and and look, it sucks. I mean, it completely sucks. Like, and then look, do I think this is like a, a huge thing? No, but at the same time, you know, there's when not it's like nothing the to it. Season, yeah, no. When it's in the, like the season, it's like the middle of the not even the middle. Like the season just ended like two or three weeks ago, not even, and he's already switching agents. Like it, it's definitely something to, you know, it's there's definitely idea. some meat to chew on there. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I mean, it's interesting. I mean, look, I'm I've always been a Coots guy. I'm gonna stick with my guns. I do think Coots is a guy who I think like outside of Atkinson who thinks he could have a rebound season. I think Atari is that guy who could have a rebound season. I think sure, there's yeah. more to that first half of Coots than there was to that second half. I agree. Um, I just look, I do I think he's overpaid? Like unfortunately, yeah, I hate to say it just because of the injury. But with the without the injury, no. I don't think so. No, without the injury, that's that's center. probably um, without the injury, I that's probably the best move play. that Tom Fletcher made. Yeah, I, I, I'm just. I, I, just I still think the back. best. I still think the best thing that Chuck probably did signing. I should say signing. Yeah. Like we'll be we'll be I, in I, the I, Mitch Cobb's second contract. I think like it's deal, but I just yeah, I just I I'm with Owen. I don't think the timeline of the deal works with Liar as well. Yeah. No, I agree with that. And it depends on which angle you look at it from. Like, from strictly a hockey perspective, too, like, Couturier's deal for a rebuilding team is not what you want to have. And especially, here, here's my main argument for it, right? Or I should say, I, I don't I don't know, though, because the more I think about it, like, once they start moving out money and stuff, like, I feel like it's not going to be that bad. Like, okay, obviously, so like, yes, like, when you look at, like, like, you know, Coots himself, but when you look at like team structure, it's like you know you, you have the, the cap floor and all I, that too. Yeah, I disagree with that. Too, though. Even with team structure, like you have guys who can play wing, but they are centers. Like Noah Case is a center; he's playing wing because that's where he was better suited for most of the season. I understand that, but if you have to put him at four C, he can play four C. Morgan Frost is a center; he can play wing. I understand that. Lawton can play wing, but he's a center. Like. They're interchangeable, and to me, Lon's kind of bounced gonna, back and forth throughout his career. Yeah, if you're gonna I, I count think you up some of those positions, but God, I I don't think I did. Did I? <laughs> well, Frost Frost is a winger. Um, he's a center, though. I mean, he's, right, he's he playing center. center, right? But he's naturally a winger, right? But I'm saying he's a center. And so was Cates. But okay, I mean, anyway. didn't didn't Konechny start off as a center too? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Konechny was a center, yeah. and then he transitioned like, away. So it's, yeah, I mean, right. My point is, when you have Paling and Lawton especially, like them, we talked about them being so similar, like Paling's just a younger version of Lawton right now, essentially, is what we have. Yeah, but like, for but me, I don't still... look at it like that. Like, I look at it like, when you, when I look at the team structure, no, because like, I, I just view it like, you're talking short term. Like, I'm talking long term. Like, I'm not Ooh, talking about... <laughs> because it's... All right, go ahead, finish. So... If you have Paling, right, you're signing him to a two. You're signing him to a two year deal, and you have Lawton, but you're you're not re- you're basically refusing to trade Lawton because you so highly value his veteran presence and his just willingness to be here, right? I understand that, and that's fine. If you're going to keep Lawton though, and you don't plan on trading him anytime soon, then having Couturier on the books too just isn't great for short term or long term because it's a longer term contract and it provides a log jam right now Granted, that makes i no think sense. How... it just it, that makes no sense you're saying because they have law and they have to get rid of coots is that what you're oh. saying i think they trade law and that's not what i'm saying Lawton's I'm number saying 10 it on makes sense Daily, to have both. Like, yeah Daily you don't have off, to like, trade them i don't think it's the same argument it's not the same thing as paling and they're not the same player Coots has much more of an offensive impact than Lawton. And same with Paling. Yeah, I mean... Okay, I was, fuck me then. Nah, I, mean, I was just kind of trying to argue the point that, like, Couturier and Lawton are both the veteran guys, the two guys that you have left over from that era. If you're going to have one, I don't see the need to have both, especially when Couturier has had problems with the coach. I understand you just named him captain and everything, but his value for the money that he's at right now, that might have been a good contract before his injuries, before you know he he started aging. But 
unfortunately, those injuries changed the entire trajectory of his career. I don't see him ever, even if he tops out and bounces back at this like insane rate, I don't think he maxes out at anything more than like 55 points in a, in a season, which for a guy who's making almost 8 million is just not going to cut it. I mean, I think if he plays with Mitch Kov, he could hit like 60, 65, but like that's not because of what he's doing. That's because of who he's playing with. Right. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I get, I get all sides. I don't think it's a bad thing if he requests a trade. And this is kind of what I was saying in the off season before we knew that he wanted to stay. Cause there was kind of some talk of like, Hey, maybe Cruz won't want to stay was my thought on it was always, if we have to have him, like if he wants to stay here, well, we better hope he plays well, but if he wants to be traded, then that contract is not a bad thing to unload. Yeah, exactly. Even if Coop is a good player and he's a good part of this team, he is objectively not a big enough impact player for it to hurt your team to trade him. So long as the trade made isn't a bad one, which I'm confident from what we've seen in Danny Barrera's ability that that wouldn't be the case. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I agree. Like, he's not like a star. Like he's not like a huge star player. Like you're, you're not, if you trade him, you're getting something back from him that can probably be good value. Or even if it's just the value of having that cap space then to then spend yeah, it for exactly. agency. I mean, who could you get for 8 million for that many years at, at this deadline? Pro, or sorry, not at this um free Fred agency. Martin yeah. H's. Yeah. Like my, the, my worry is that the, the whole like drama between him and Torts kind of how 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 public that that whole thing was well, so might, might thing. make so, it feel like me, make it, might make it seem like oh well they're just trying to get rid of him now or oh he wants a trade or he requested the trade so that kind of lessens the return you might get it's for a bad him. pr yeah I can honestly yeah. just let me ask, ask this question if they have a different coach do we still feel the same about Coots? We're back to fire and oh right. <laughs> if they have okay. a different coach then no they're not going to no, no, i mean they're more than likely not going to be beefing if there's a different coach now. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, the guy who's beefing with is this is fucking dinosaur is the one who evaluates the talent. Dinosaur is crazy. Um, guy got mad at Trevor Zegers because he did a wraparound in the air. He was a he was a TV personality. Like it's his job to have oh, stop. TV personality, Jesus Christ! That's what he was. Oh my God! That's what he was. This is the fucking torch defending pod. Okay. okay, I'm not saying that that take on the Zegers thing was right, but like, it was his like, if his job at the time was to get like viewership and promote viewership for what make people want to watch, like that whatever the stream was or whatever, he did a good job of that. With that That's comment, really, what you thought that was because of? I don't think it's why he did that, but I'm, I'm, I'm just saying I, we can't like. Let's not he's probably amping a little bit. He's on TV. Yeah, and let's yeah. not. Cite, like, wasn't he eating pasta like, like yeah, he was like that same John episode Tortellini. or something? Like yeah, John Tortellini. Like, yeah, yeah. Like I'm just saying, let's not cite that as the reason. Yeah, for... I mean, <laughs> I, I think the short term and the short answer is, uh, you know bad PR look, but Uh-oh. if it gets unloaded, I don't really think it's a huge deal. Yeah. 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 All right. Let's move on. Uh, so there was one thing that I do want to mention. Um, I kind of talked about this the other day. I tweeted it. Um, the Flyers, I, I've heard looking for a right-hand defenseman, guy who can play around like 20-something minutes a night, um, isn't pushing or over 30, kind of like in the middle, I guess, maybe like 23 to like 27-ish. Um, we'll also consider left-hand defenseman. It's interesting. I think there's a lot of names. Um, I have heard some, um, but we shall see. One of the guys that I personally wonder about is Matias Samuelson. He's young. He's on a great contract. Uh, I he think already he's, has ties to the org. Yep. Or I think that? there's – I mean, Shell, Shell, yeah, Shell isn't obviously there. His sister is in the PR department. Um, I don't know – how much, uh, you know, of the, 
fuck, we gotta cut that. Yeah, we do. As what? soon as you said that, I was like, he can't, he can't laugh over Allie. Over what? Uh, I, the reason I did that is because I don't think that's his sister, is it? Yes. They're related? That's actually his sister? Yeah, dude. Allie is fucking Sean's daughter. Yes. Did she eat him? Jesus <laughs> Christ. That's my good. God. Wait, are you sure? Oh, is that well, Alex? I literally had conversations about him oh with God. her. Yes. Well I, well, I just looked up who his sisters, his siblings were, and Alexandra. Yeah. So I'm guessing yeah, that's yeah, Alexandra. Yeah, that's yeah. Alexandra. Yeah. I just saw Alexandra. Yeah. Holy fuck. All right. Um, yeah, their dad is Shell. All right. Well, then let's just start that up right again. Then I won't even mention her. Yeah. All right, let's move on. So uh, I've been hearing some things um, around the team. Uh, Flyers are kind of, right now, they're looking for a right-handed defenseman. Um, guy who can play around 20 minutes a night, isn't pushing over 30-ish. Um, they'll also consider a left-handed defenseman. I know it's kind of a bland, kind of broad kind of report, but it's definitely it's worth specific. noting. Yeah, and I do think there are some names to it, but I can't necessarily say who um, as of right now. There are some guys I have wondered about. Um, Matias Samuelson is one of them. Younger, he's 24, he's on a really good contract. Ties with the org with his father. Um, and Shell, that's one thing. I don't know. I mean, I think there's. it, it makes me more excited, I think, for the offseason and just for the draft and where the Flyers are, are at. Um, yeah. But it, it's definitely something to keep in mind. Jacob Chirkin could be another one. Um, it's another Samuelson. one with Ties with the org. Wait, we'll stay with Samuelson real quick uh, before we get off of that. Interesting, too, considering the Sabres' defensive depth. You've got um, Dahlin, Power, now they got Bo Byram. You know, like they're, they've got a nice young defense core. Uh, they've got a lot of good guys. I would not be shocked if they're looking to get rid of one. Um, yeah. And, you know, with Power and Dahlin, you'd think they're there to stay. Uh, they just got Bo Byram, so you'd imagine – he would also be there to stay unless he's quickly moved again. But I think Samuelson, he makes a lot of sense to me. Honestly, that wouldn't surprise me if, if Byron was flipped like right away. And also, I wouldn't surprise yeah. me if the Flyers were in on it. Mm-hmm. Because I know that he's one of the guys that they kind of kicked tires on when they were in the process of trading Gauthier. Maybe not during that process, but I know like dr- the whole Drysdale targeting saga was like, he was one of the guys that they looked at, but Byram was another one that they were really interested in. So that I could definitely mm-hmm. see that. Yeah. Uh, anything else, boys, before we kind of wrap up? Um, no. Stay tuned to the Phantoms. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I there, guess go Phantoms. That's how you support the team now. Um, some big games coming up here against Hershey. Yeah, um, Paul and I are going to be doing a stream for uh, game two as well. Yep. Stay tuned for okay, that. Sir. Are you not? Are you going to the? Are you in the press box for? Yeah, I'll be in three? the press box for game three yeah. and, and and game four if they make it. Um, but I will be in the press box for both. Paul will be there as well. I think he'll be in the stands. Um, yeah. Um, also, um, make sure you you join our Discord. Um, always a lot of really fun stuff going on in our Discord. We're talking about the Phantoms. Um, you can post your questions for the podcast in the Discord. I know we also have the call line right. 267-939-1216 on your screen right there. Um, Colin, uh, we're always looking for, for you know, questions from you guys to feature on the podcast. Um, it's always a good time to hear what you guys have to say. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you do call in, just give your name to start. Yeah. So we can, uh, yeah. Name, spot. where you're from, kind of the whole thing, and then we'll kind of just go from there. Yeah. Um, yeah, sweet. All right, boys. Uh, yeah, thanks, everybody, again, for all the support, as always. Uh, we'll talk to you guys all again next time. See you guys. Yeah!